Hi, my name is David Harrison. I'm a lawyer and I like to talk to you on the back of them. Um, please like and subscribe if you want to and leave a comment. Um, I've got this glass here because I want to explain what the um, uh, differences between Baclofen and other drugs and what it means uh, to say that Baclofen is an, is an agonist. Now, uh, Baclofen is a molecule uh, which was uh, invented uh, in the 1960s for treatment of um, epilepsy and it wasn't particularly uh, successful. Um, but they did find it, it helped with uh, other things like uh, other conditions like um, uh, multiple sclerosis, uh, tremors, uh, twitches, hiccups. And um, there was some uh, uh, use of it back in, in uh, I think, Louisiana, uh, through uh, which led to um, the filing of a patent application uh, for it. But that, uh, I don't think, was ever... Um, it was ever uh, granted. Um, and so it's been around for quite a while. Uh, the effect of baclofen is, is on what are called uh, neurotransmitters, and in particular the GABA B uh, receptors in the brain. And it's one of the few drugs that actually works on those receptors. Um, there are other drugs like uh, diazepam and uh, other hallucinogenic, hallucinogenic drugs that, that work on what's called the GABA B. Have a receptor, uh, but there are very few drugs uh, or chemicals that actually work on the gamma B receptor, um, and those are uh, gamma hydroxybutyric acid (GHB), uh, gabapentin, uh, and and alcohol. And so you have this this uh, drug that comes this molecule called baclofen, which is actually what's called an agonist, uh, because it, it works in the same way as uh, GHB on the gamma. Uh, B receptor. Now, uh, GHB is a naturally occurring substance in the brain, um, and it um, it works to calm down this neuroreceptor. Um, and so you, you'll you'll know that at the end of say a work day, say it's Friday or Thursday, Friday, and you feel so you're getting a bit worn down, and you want to go up, and you feel anxious, um, so you go up for a drink, and it, you feel great after a while. Well, that's the effect of alcohol. On, on your brain. It's calming you down, it's making you feel good again. Now, alcohol also acts on another re receptor, which is GABA-A, and it makes you feel happy. So there are certain drugs that work on the GABA-A uh, receptor uh, to make you feel euphoric and happy. But, but, but the, the GABA-B receptor, uh, and this is speaking from my own experience of taking baclofen, um, uh, if you can imagine there being a, a, a spectrum of feelings between uh, feeling very bad, very anxious, to pe feeling very happy, and a middle spot where you feel normal. Well, those drugs which work on the GABA-A receptor, if I can put it this way, work to make you feel happier. So uh, people say, well, I drink because I feel happy. So uh, to stop drinking, they, uh, someone might say, well, why don't you take uh, something to, uh, like serotonin or eat chocolate or something that makes you feel happy. Um, and if you if you do that, then you know you'll you'll maybe have, lose your cravings. Do something else to make yourself feel happy, and and you can stop because really you're only taking it because you want to feel happy, and that's really quite self-serving, isn't it? Uh, and selfish, and you're creating all sorts of havoc in our lives in your own life because you're taking this, and it's all because you want to be happy. But but what what was overlooked in all of the the studies of um, uh, alcoholism until uh, Dr. Meisen came along was that was that actually the reason people take uh, a lot of people take um, alcohol, uh, and this certainly was the case in Dr. Meissen's situation. He took it because he had this an overwhelming sense of um, anxiety, um, and that's governed by the GABA B receptor. So it's not that you're taking it to make yourself euphoric or happy, it's that you're taking it to take you from a position of being extremely anxious to a state of normality. So, effectively, what you're doing, if you take that as a receptor, just imagine, you can fill that with GBH, and you go from being feeling not anxious, uh, anxious to feeling not anxious, or you can fill the same cup, the same receptor, with um, alcohol, and once it's full, you feel probably not just, uh, uh, well, once, it, once the, the uh, GABA-B receptor is full, you'll feel fine. 
But if you drink too much of it, it takes you into the in, across the spectrum towards feeling euphoric and eventually passing out. Um, if you fill the receptor with baclofen, it will take you from feeling anxious to feeling normal, which is a, a very peculiar sensation. Um, the first time I took it, I took about uh, five milligrams on a Friday evening sitting on the sofa, and I sat in, and after about 20 minutes, um, all my cares went away. Uh, my worries disappeared, my anxiety about everything just disappeared, and I felt perfectly at ease, and I was able to think about things which only a few moments earlier uh, I'd been worrying about. Uh, I'd had thoughts going around in my head about various things, and with Baclofen I was able to um, to separate all those thoughts and deal with them individually. So, for, for instance, I might have several things happening the next week, and they'd be going around thinking, oh my God, I've got to, got to do something about that, I've got to do something about that. And I'd try to separate my thoughts and think, well, when do I do this? And what happens about that? What if it, this goes wrong? And with Baclofen, I was able to think, well, I've got this one problem next Thursday. How, what do I do about that? Right, this is the answer to that. Uh, that's how I'll deal with it. Put that aside. Think about another problem. What's the answer to that? Put that aside. Uh, think about another problem. Think it through. Put it over there. And then I'd be left feeling absolutely fine. I didn't feel giddy or euphoric. I just felt normal. Just as though there weren't really any problems that I couldn't think through and think of an answer and, and then not worry about it. So what I say to people about Baclofen is that if you have a receptor uh, and it's empty, it's a receptor that deals with um, uh, anxiety and needs to be filled so that you don't have a deficiency in the chemical which calms anxiety. Um, if that chemical is missing, you can fill it with two or three things. You can fill it with GHB, but um, that is actually uh, in even small doses quite uh, dangerous because that's what they call the um, date rape drug, and it's not available uh, generally except in Italy under a na the name of Alcover. So it is used for alcohol treatment, but generally speaking, it's considered to be a bit uh, over the top in terms of treatment, so they don't prescribe it. Uh, and it's so, it's so um, uh, powerful that, uh, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's considered dangerous in, in anything that's of a prescribable level. So, so you can either fill it with a natural GHB, but if that's gone, from your system, then you don't have that. Or you can fill it with alcohol, or you can fill it with baclofen. And if you fill it with baclofen, once it's full, you can't put anything else in it. So that's that. And that's why you don't feel like drinking, because your neuroreceptor is full. And when that happens, you don't feel like drinking. Someone will put a glass of alcohol in front of you, and if you were an alcoholic, you'd look at it and say, I don't need it. And that's the magic of baclofen that it actually does take away your neurological desire to drink. And when you take it, you realize that it, it's not a choice to drink. Um, it's actually something that, that is fulfilling a neurological uh, need in your brain. And that when you, when you um, fulfill that, fill that need with another chemical, then that desire goes away. And, and you can look at a a glass of wine, and in fact, you won't you won't want to drink it. You'll say, "Well, no, I, I don't I don't want to drink that." You, your brain will say, "I don't need that. It won't do me any good. I don't desire that." And that's a very strange thing if you've been drinking for quite some time um, to go from saying, "Well, I, I don't need that. I'm thirsty, but I'd just prefer to have a glass of water." So you actually become alcohol adverse um, by taking. Uh, by taking by taking baclofen, um, and and what I was saying about filling the glass is is the difference between um, is what an agonist is because what you're doing is you're doing the, an agonist is something which does the same thing as uh, alcohol or the the drug you're trying to the substance you're trying to replace, whereas an antagonist is something which which is like a prophylactic so an, an if you were an alcoholic and you were taking an antagonist, you would be effectively saying, I'm not 
drinking any more alcohol. So you'd put a you put a cover over the cup, and that's what an antagonist is. Um, and then, and so you have things like uh, 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 certain drugs which you take, which make you stop, um, which make you aver averse to drinking. So you throw up, for instance. Um, and, and those are drugs which are um, trying to stop you from from drinking by uh, deadening deadening the uh, desire to drink by putting a cover over it. Uh, and those have typically proven not to be um, as successful because they don't actually address the anxiety that Dr. Meissen's talking about. So, that, so that's how I try to explain, uh, with the use of a cup, uh, what an agonist is and why baclofen works. Um, you have to get to a certain level. It has, uh, it has, a, um, it has side effects. Um, so initially, for instance, you might take a small amount of baclofen and it's effectively like filling up the cup to there. And so you have this much, so you might find a slight reduction in drinking, or you might not notice it. Um, and you might have other reasons for drinking, that you're drinking with friends, you're drinking, you've got a, a, a habit of drinking with dinner. Um, so you're not really noticing. But as you increase the amount of baclofen in the receptor till it's full, to, to the filling, uh, to the brim, it's that point that you, you get what's called this, uh, the trigger point, where uh, you no longer feel the need. And I, it's a very serious issue because I, I've actually seen this work, and I've actually seen someone with a severe alcohol problem uh, in the depths of, um, of uh, a binge uh, simply refuse to take um, alcohol when given the choice between alcohol and water simply because they're being given at the same time an adequate dose of baclofen. So it, it does work. Um, that's what I wanted to talk to you about tonight. Um, I've got some other topics, but I'll, I'll do those next week, and I'll see you again. Bye-bye.